Hey y'all, what's going on? It's Hunter Elliott, rangehot.com. Hope everybody's doing well. So we're doing part two of our back to basics, talking about semi-automatic handguns. I hope you had a chance to catch our part one about revolvers. If you did not, well, shame on you, but I'm gonna put a link to that video in the description below so you can check it out if you so choose. But today, semi-automatic handguns. Before we get started, there's a couple things I wanna go over. Uh, first of all, Candy and I both have ensured there is no live ammunition here. All these guns are empty, chambers, magazines, safe to talk about. Two is semi-automatic versus fully automatic versus fully semi-automatic. Candy's like, you know what, you should, you should bring that up. It's back to basics. Some people may be wondering. First of all, there is absolutely whatsoever no such thing as fully semi-automatic. That's some, that's, that's some term, some, some idiot reporter come up with on the fly in an attempt to generate some drama on an otherwise very poorly done news story. So no such thing as semi, fully, semi, fully automatic. None of that. Semi-automatic is loaded firearm. Every time you pull the trigger, it's going to fire around until you stop pulling the trigger or you deplete your ammunition supply. Fully automatic is you pull the trigger, you hold it to the rear, and it continues to fire until you let your finger off the trigger or deplete your ammunition supply. Now, that's a machine gun, and that's a whole other topic about that, but understand that they are very, very heavily regulated, and very few people that you know, if anybody's going to have one, but we're going to do a whole video on the heavily regulated NFA items. But here, semi-automatic handguns. Now we're going to start with the 1911 because it is a single action semi-automatic handgun. And while not all handguns that are single action semi-automatic are going to be 1911s, probably most of them are. So I figured this would be a pretty good platform to start with. And let's begin with nomenclature. First of all, this is the magazine. This is not a clip. This is a magazine. This is a magazine well. This area here, everything is built off of, is the receiver. These, where you grip, they're not grips. These are called stocks. What holds them on are called stock screws. Magazine well, front strap, rear strap, or mainspring housing. The 1911 has a grip safety, as do a lot of handguns. This is the hammer, the rear sight, the front sight. This is the ejection port. This area here is the slide. You can see the muzzle. On the receiver, this part is called the dust cover. And on this pistol is machined in a Picatinny rail for adding accessories like lights or what have you. Not all 1911s are going to have a Picatinny rail machined into the dust cover, but this Stan Weston Specialist does. And I don't know if I mentioned it, it's probably my favorite 1911. Here you have the trigger guard, the trigger. And on this pistol, you have an ambidextrous thumb safety. This is the starboard side and port side thumb safety. Sweeping that up like that engages the safety. Here is your magazine release. This is your slide stop or slide release. And essentially, just like the single action revolver, the hammer has to be cocked for it to work. So the hammer's cocked, you pull the trigger. Now what would happen is the firing pin strikes the primer. Primer ignites that powder charge. Powder charge begins to build up high pressure gas, pushes the bullet down the barrel, out the muzzle. And then for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That brass case is gonna push against the slide, pushing this slide to the rear, kicking out the empty case, loading a fresh one, just like when you loaded it. And you can see here, the hammer is cocked. So essentially, for the first round, you have to utilize these forward and rear cocking serrations. You load it from there, and then henceforth, it's semi-automatic, so every time you pull the trigger, it's gonna load itself and cock that hammer. You can see here, when I pull the trigger, the hammer falls. Now, for example, just like on a single action revolver, with the hammer down and I pull the trigger, nothing happens. That's the very basics on a semi-automatic single action handgun. Now, for the double action semi-automatic handgun, we're gonna talk about the CZ SP-01 Tactical, which is one of my favorite double action handguns. Uh, and while the nomenclature is gonna be very similar to the single action, I think it's still worth going over. 
magazine, magazine well, front strap, rear strap. This is called the beaver tail area that there is no grip safety, but some double action pistols are going to have a grip safety, but this beaver tail is all just for getting a good solid purchase on the handgun. Good quality handguns is always going to have a decent beaver tail. Hammer, rear sight, ejection port, front sight, slide, receiver. This area here is the receiver. These are the stocks, trigger guard, trigger. Now you can see on this one, you may be asking yourself, why is the barrel protruding from the slide like that? This barrel is threaded to allow attaching a silencer. Over here, you can see that this is the slide release, slide stop, magazine release. And on this, as with a lot of double action pistols, you have a decocker. So you can see I have the hammer cock similar as a single action. You choose not to fire it. You can always just push that decocker down port or starboard and it will safely lower that hammer home. It's going to be very similar, but we do have some inert dummy rounds here. So I'm going to go through a real quick demo. Just like with the 1911, to bring this thing ready to fire, insert the magazine, utilizing the forward or rear cocking serrations, you're going to pull the slide to the rear sharply and let it go. Now one thing I'll touch on real quick is sometimes when I see people working that slide, they're gonna just kinda ease at home or ride at home. When you pull that slide to the rear, you need to let it go. There is a recoil spring in here that needs to do its job. It needs that energy to strip those rounds out of the magazine. So don't ride the slide. Now you can see here, the hammer is cocked, just like with a single action. Now from here, I can fire the pistol. We do have dummy rounds in here, so I'm gonna show you exactly what's going on. When I pull the trigger, same thing's gonna happen. It's going to fire that bullet. The bullet's going to travel down the bore, down the barrel, out the muzzle. That empty brass case, going to push this slide to the rear. And it would kick that empty case out and that recoil spring, fitting another round into the chamber. Now at this point, let's say you're done firing, you want to carry the gun. You can utilize this decocker that we showed you to decock the hammer. So you can just pull the trigger and then same same so single action or decock it double action and then it's just going to continue to fire and then you can a lot of people would choose to carry the gun like this and double action they got you know pull the pull the pistol out pull the trigger and then it's going to fire and then just like with if you're shooting live rounds when you deplete that magazine Slide's gonna lock to the rear. That's gonna, that should hold true on most semi-automatic pistols. When you deplete the magazine, it's gonna lock the slide to the rear. And that's essentially gonna be your double action semi-automatic handgun. Next, we're gonna talk about striker fire. And this is probably my least favorite of the semi-automatic pistols. Um, here we have a Glock 17. You may recognize this pistol. I've used it for a lot of test subjects for testing sites and different stuff from Crimson Trace and all that sort of stuff. But it is a Glock and Glock is pretty synonymous with striker fired so I thought this would be a pretty good fit. And while here again the nomenclature is going to be very similar, it's still probably worth going over. Magazine, magazine well. This is a polymer frame or receiver. From what I understand, all pistols, this is called a receiver. However, on Glock, you cannot remove the stock, so you get what you get. You still have a beaver tail. Rear cocking serrations on the slide. Front sight. Well, this would be a rear sight, but I've swapped in a holographic sight from Crimson Trace, but this is where your rear sight goes. Still have an ejection port. Muzzle. This is the dust cover, and you can see here also, machined into the dust cover, like the two pistols before, is a Picatinny rail. Then you have the trigger guard, the trigger, and within the trigger is the safety. It's a little safety bar that is disengaged when you depress it. And then flipping over here, you're going to see the magazine release and the slide release. Operations here again is going to be the same. You insert the magazine, rack the slide, lows the chamber. However, with a striker fired, there is no hammer. You have a striker, which is essentially a firing pin. And when you rack that slide, you put that striker under a degree of spring tension already. 
and then it's engaged with the trigger bar. And so on this striker fired, as you begin to pull the trigger to the rear, that trigger bar is pulling that striker firing pin even further to the back until it reaches all the way rear travel and then the sear trips it and fires the pistol. Same, same, all the way through, just like with the single and double action, except this is striker fired, so you don't have any kind of hammer here to, to witness. But essentially from that, they're all the same. Now, those three pistols I just talked about are, well, they all utilize the very basic fundamentals of how a pistol is going to work a, a semi-automatic handgun and they fire from what's called a locked breech without getting into a whole lot of technical terms which we will later but for those that are just curious a log breech tilting barrel lock breech means that when you fire the pistol and this slide begins to reciprocate it actually unlocks the barrel the barrel has locking grooves on top of it that locks in with the slide so here when it's in battery, when the slide is all the way forward, this is known as in battery. For all intents and purposes, this slide and barrel are one piece. They're locked in together. When you fire it, it needs to unlock in order to you know, move, eject the spent case and all that sort of stuff. So there is a camming surface. On, on some pistols, they use a little cam at the bottom of the barrel, a little link, but they all have a camming surface that as you begin to retract the slide, it cams that barrel down. And when it cams that barrel down enough, it unlocks from the slide. And you can see this, Candy, if you would zoom in here how I've got this barrel, and they can probably see how this barrel is tilted. Do you see how this barrel is tilted? That's because it's unlocked. Now when I ride the slide home, and it locks up in full battery, now the barrel is level. Like I said, it's all one piece, but when you fire it, I, I don't know if you can see this or not, but that unlocks, comes to the rear, and you can see this barrel tilting. Now that, that lock tilting barrel lock brief design originated by John Browning, and he it was it was introduced in several pistols and made its big debut in the 1911, which is famous for the its reliability and, and durability and lovability. <laughs> um, but you have that, that lock breech design and that's synonymous with a great deal of handguns. However, there are some that are called direct blowback. Now the reason you have a lock breech is when you pull that trigger, you know, you, you do have an explosion going on. So you, you have to maintain that in order to make sure all the gases direct that bullet down the bore and out the muzzle and that locked up like that allows for that there's enough delay in that slide moving rear so by the time that slide has unlocked all the pressure is gone from the muzzle and it's safe to unlock really ingenious system really good system however here's a high point in 45 auto now the high point uses essentially what's called direct blowback there is no locking mechanism in this at all. Essentially, what holds the pressure contained therein is the weight of the slide and the weight of the recoil spring. That holds all this in place long enough. So when you fire this, nothing is locked up. This begins rearward travel. And so it, it travels back just enough by the time it begins to expose the chamber the pressure levels have dropped to a safe level, so you're not worried. So it's just as safe as the tilting barrel lock breech design. However, the drawback to this is you got to have a big, heavy, bulky slide and heavy recoil spring, so it makes the pistol larger. But one benefit is the barrel never tilts. The barrel stays in the exact same place all the time, which could lend itself to being a little more accurate, believe it or not. But now how true that is in the field, I'm not exactly sure. But but that is your difference between the tilting barrel lock breech and direct blowback. Now, real quick, I know we've gone over long, but I'm gonna talk about why semi-automatic handguns or single action, double action, striker fired, and their preferred methods of carry real quick like a rabbit. So on a 1911, my preferred method of carry is in condition one, 
which means chamber loaded, hammer to the rear, thumb safety engaged. This is probably, if you're carrying a 1911, this is probably how you're gonna to wanna to carry it. If you're curious about all the different conditions, you know what, I did a video on that too. I'll link that below, you can check that out. It's about the 1911, but the 1911 was designed where it can be carried in a number of different ways safely, but condition one is probably the best way to carry it because you don't have to, something happens, all you gotta do is sweep that thumb safety off. You're not bothering with trying to rack the slide and all that sort of stuff. Now with the CZ, it's double action. So the same benefits like with a double action revolver, but you can carry it like this. If something happens, you can draw it and you can just point and click and it's gonna work. But you can watch here when I thumb cock this hammer, essentially the slide will be doing that. But you can see that trigger moves to the rear somewhat. And so that's gonna create a shorter trigger travel and a lighter trigger pull. And what that's good for is, the same with a double action revolver, is the lighter the trigger and the less you gotta pull it, the less chance you're gonna disturb your sight alignment and sight picture while pulling the trigger. It's a lot lighter trigger in single action just with like the revolver. And of course the striker fired, it's gonna be the same, same all the way through. However, generally speaking, it's always gonna be, a, I say always, some people's gonna argue with me, but in my opinion, the trigger pull is always gonna be way worse than a single action and substantially worse than a double action because it's kind of long and gritty and mushy. It's just, it's not a, doesn't have the, it's it's fine, it's, it's very serviceable, but it's just not ideal. Now with the high point, the trigger pull is inconsequential. All the mechanics, all the manual of arms, how you load, racking the slide, firing, all that, notwithstanding to the fact that it is a direct blowback. So anyway, I know I went a long ways on that, but I wanted to go through all that sort of stuff. So if you've made it to the end, thank you very much. Please consider subscribing, stick around, let me know what you think of the video. Y'all take care of yourself, be safe. We'll see you at the range.